And, and that's the whole goal is just to kind of to, to be a living history display uh, for people that want to learn but don't really want to pick up a book and read. Mm-hmm. We're that alternative way to go show and demonstrate how, how baseball was played. Uh, and hopefully we'll spark some interest in some people. But if we can put a, a smile on some kids' faces, it's worth it. Welcome to Friends in the Corner Podcast, stories and topics from around Kentucky. I'm your host, Dan, coming to you from beautiful and also incredibly humid Lexington, Kentucky. Happy to be with you guys again for another episode of Friends in the Corner Podcast. As we're going to be talking with an uh, old voice to the show and a new voice to the show here today, we're going to be talking with Max Godby and Tommy Druin of the Georgetown Gentlemen. Yeah, so a long-time listeners of the show already know who Max is. He's been on a lot of episodes here. Former UK football player, All-State's Good Works Award winner. He's helped to review the NFL draft. He's been able, He's helped us to preview Kentucky football seasons in the past, BBN Chalk Talk, all that fun stuff. But now, Max is taking a new avenue into his athletic background as he has helped to form an 1860s vintage baseball team in the Georgetown, Kentucky area. Joined by his cousin, Tommy Druin, we learn a little bit about Tommy on this episode, his connection with the Georgetown gentlemen and founding the team. And uh, Tommy is also on the board for Wart Hall, the historical home out in Georgetown as well. So we learn a little bit about the connection between Wart Hall and the Georgetown gentlemen. We uh, learn a little bit about what goes into forming an 1860s baseball league in the middle of Kentucky, the big community that is this Vintage Baseball Association, and what we can expect for this upcoming season as the Georgetown gentlemen start their inaugural season in the Georgetown area. So if you want to learn more after today's episode about the Georgetown gentlemen and a little bit about their schedule to go check out a game, you can find them on Facebook at the Georgetown gentlemen. And learn more about it on Ward Hall's website as well, warthall.org, where you can learn about the house, but also see some more updates on the Georgetown Gentlemen also. But this was definitely a fun and insightful interview about the history and the uh, community that is vintage baseball. And I hope you guys, after this episode, want to check out the Georgetown Gentlemen live in action. But I say without further ado, let's learn a little bit more about this team as we get ready to play ball here with our guest. And ladies and gentlemen... Max Godby and Tommy Druin of the Georgetown Gentlemen. Talking with Tommy Druin, an old uh, friend of the show here, and Max Godby. And Max, this is going to be a bit of a different episode than what we're used to because normally when we come on here, we, we talk about the pigskin sports, but now we're talking about the uh, cork and leather sports, man. So what, what's that all about? I mean, it's not even cork and leather. It's more just a stick. A and, stick. Uh, Stick and pine ball cut. string kind of thing now with uh, very hot wool outfits now. <laughs> it, you know what? I'm just I'm just a multi dimensional athlete. You know, th- th- I think that's the biggest takeaway we need for this. Uh, so, do you get a double check from NCAA video games? They for the, better, yeah, from the NCAA baseball game. So. I'm I'm going to cash in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking back here with uh, Max Gobby and uh, another relative of his joining the show. I don't know if we can handle this or not. Uh, Mr. Tommy Drew and Tommy, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing great. You kill my reputation already, though, by telling that I'm Max's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> this just goes downhill from here. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Just wait until you uh, open up your Twitter account after the show. All right. yeah. <laughs> we directed all the heat that Max's way. So. <laughs> Well, listeners to the show know Max pretty well. He's been on half the episodes I've made. <laughs> but, but Tom, this is your first time on here, so if you don't mind just enlightening my audience a little bit about who you are and where you're from. Sure. Well, uh, I grew up in uh, Metcalf County, Kentucky, South Central Kentucky, um, right in the heart downtown wisdom, uh, population 53. Smart uh, people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we, we never you know named the real reason why it's named wisdom is just yeah it's i'm sure it's an intelligence factor uh but uh grew up in metcalf county uh after that went to center college danville graduated 2000 uh got a job with state government moved to georgetown kentucky um 
it, it was mainly the the fact I was dating a girl that was going to Georgetown College. I was going to be driving back and forth between Frankfurt and Georgetown every day. Either way, I like Georgetown better than Frankfurt. It became home. So, <laughs> so I've been there uh, since 2001, so 20 years now in in Georgetown. And right. just what uh, what do you do for the government? So I work for the uh, the state legislature with the Kentucky House of Representatives. Um, I work for uh, Speaker David Osborne. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Well, cool. We got some political strength here in the house so but hey we're not here to talk about politics because nope. i don't want to veer my uh, listeners away <laughs> so we're, we're going to be talking why did you invite max <laughs> <laughs> i i have a sensor button for max anytime he gets too much on a front on a uh, rant <laughs> strong opinions on things that really don't matter yeah that's kind of my mantra in yeah. life yeah. <laughs> i i will say that there have been seasons of time when i've had to put max on mute on twitter but i think <laughs> anyone has ever had to do that what is usually football season uh actually it's after football season when you don't have anything else to tweet that, about well, <laughs> that is very true yeah that is very true yeah. football seasons when i put him on mute <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're here uh, today to talk a little bit about something you guys are getting started in, something uh, happening in you guys' community at Georgetown, which is where you both live. Um, we're going to be talking about a uh, vintage baseball league that you guys are starting, the Georgetown Gentlemen. So the Facebook page for the Georgetown Gentlemen, for those of you who might not know, it says that uh, this is a vintage baseball uh, team playing by 1860s rules as a way to teach the history of the game in a fun way. So just a lot to eat on there as we're kind of diving in and just uh, jumping right into the uh, deep end. Uh, talk to us a little bit about this program. Talk to us about the Georgetown gentlemen, the, the uh, vintage baseball aspect of it, and what got you guys involved in it. Sure. Uh, so 10 years ago, 11 years ago, somewhere along those lines, um, well, start off with uh, – Ward Hall is a historic mansion in Georgetown, just outside Georgetown. And mm. about 15 years ago, it was on the brink of destruction. Uh, some property developers bought the land that were going to tear down. A group was formed to save the home, uh, the Ward Hall Preservation Foundation. I'm on that board. I uh, have been since, the, since its inception. Wow. Now, about 10 years ago, we're trying to come up with creative ways to use the home and the property and everything. I, our our house tour is fantastic, but once you've been on a house tour, you don't necessarily come back right. too often. So we were trying to find things to do, and honestly, I'm just sitting around the house one day, flip on ESPN two or three or Ocho, whatever it was at the time <laughs> for the the most vague sports out there, and there's a vintage baseball game. Um, and it, it's it really was is these guys in period costume or uniform, you know, from the 1860s playing that way. And I'm like, this is pretty neat. So I did what I usually do. And I just popped up Google and started looking. Well, it turns out there are a whole lot of teams in the Cincinnati area. Hmm. And I'm like, well, this could be fun. So I, I talked to our board. I'm like, why don't we just host a game, a vintage baseball game at Ward Hall? We've got, you know, we've got the house, but we've got 40 acres surrounding it too. I'm like, let's, you know, after the, Let's cut the hay in that hay field, and after that, let's let's just play some baseball. If you build it, they will come. Exactly. Well, uh, they were fine with that, so I approached uh, a team in Cincinnati, got hooked up with them, and um, for 10 years, we've been doing that. Well, we get really good crowds for vintage baseball games there. And, and I mean, from the inception, um, this one team, Black Bottom Nine out of Cincinnati, they have they kept encouraging me to get a team started in Georgetown or somewhere around central Kentucky because at the time there were no teams in Kentucky whatsoever. Well, I had, I had two kids, didn't have time to do anything like that. Plus not exactly a baseball pro. I think my last time uh, playing was like fourth or fifth grade little league, something along those lines. Um, but this past year, uh, pandemic being what it was, I think everybody had their pandemic projects uh, I decided I'm 43 years old. If I ever want to do this, I better get get to it. Uh, so I started contacting just some friends, called Max up, thought he might be interested. He was gung-ho, started growing his mustache for it that day. <laughs> and, and, and we've got, I mean, we've got 15 excited guys to play. And I mean, we're, we're getting the, everything ready to go. Awesome. Hey, I mean that you know that, there's a lot there to hear about. I didn't know vintage baseball was such a, a uh, large uh, 
thing out there. <laughs> it, it's larger than I knew it was even. Uh, so we've joined the Vintage Baseball Association. Mm. Uh, and there's probably about 50 teams in the nation that are members of that. But then there's also a lot of just independent teams that aren't a member of the association. Uh, but ever since ever since we went live on Facebook, I keep getting random messages uh, asking us, hey, do you want to come here and play? Or do you want to go? Um, we're we're going to play a game in October in Augusta, Kentucky, but it's going to be against a team from Detroit that's coming down to play. I, I mean, these people, they don't mind to travel. So it's 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 pretty nationwide. And yeah. so at Wart Hall, you've already been hosting yes. some of these vintage games yes. before with groups from Cincinnati. But it's always been the same two teams. So uh, I didn't uh, I didn't realize that the community was yeah. as big as it is. So it's been the Globetrotters versus the uh, ca- Captains or Capitals or wherever they are. Pretty, pretty <laughs> so, much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many people do you guys usually get out to the games? So we've, we've usually got about 200 to That's come. Awesome. Uh, you know, some years are better than others. It depends on the heat or the rain or things like that. But And they've told us that we draw amazing crowds for vintage baseball. So I think there is a a desire, you know, to, to in Georgetown, in central Kentucky. And we don't have – there's not a lot of vintage baseball anywhere around here. So – but, you know, Kentucky, we're sports crazy. Oh, yeah. So I, th- I think we'll be a great draw. But it's a, it's a very family-friendly type thing. Uh, it, it, the three rules usually are uh, there's no spitting, no cussing, and no gloves. So you – the first person you thought to pick was Max for this team. I've never seen him spit. <laughs> I have. I mean, that, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Well, I mean, again, a, a chance, you know, the, the NFL thing didn't work out, the, or the CFL thing, or the AFL, or, you know, any FL really worked out. So a chance to become a professional athlete, he gave me a dollar, so therefore I am a professional athlete. And you're allowed to accept it now. Exactly. That was before our nonprofit status kicked in. That is so. very true. That is very true. Yes, because that, that's that's turned to a whole – yeah. I, so when he says that I was gun-ho, I, I think it was just out of shock. I love my cousin to death. But if he calls me – I usually know that means he needs something or <laughs> is about ready to get me into something. And the words, hey, Max, how about you join me in playing? He didn't say vintage baseball. He said 1865 baseball and just left it at that. And at first I was like, okay. He's young. I thought if I said vintage, he might think 1970s. That's <laughs> yeah. very true. But I was like, okay. I've got questions. So he said, well, let's go over to Country Boy, and I will explain it. (laughs) And after that, I was like, okay, I am completely on board with this. He brings up Ward Hall for anyone. I mean, you're very Kentucky Central, uh, Kentucky Centric in your podcast. That is an awesome place to go. And I'm not just saying that because I'm from Georgetown or, or live in Georgetown. I mean, it is a really cool tour. It's a really intricate part of history, especially if you're really into the Civil War, uh, Civil War area uh, era, the the politics of the Civil War, the economy during the Civil War. If you want to know about Lexington, the horse as well, there was stuff about that that I didn't even know about. It is a very very cool. I do recommend do not go when it's really really hot because there is no AC on that, and I have griped to Tommy about that that they need to up. We're trying Maybe to keep it authentic. He, need, he needs he a needs cooling, rubber... cooling station out yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to get some of those Rupp Arena uh, renovations into Ward Hall, yeah. with stuff like that. <laughs> but it's a really cool – it's it's a really, really cool part of Kentucky history that is not talked about a lot, and it's it's a – I highly recommend it. I didn't know much about it, honestly. I, I think I've, like, in the back of my mind heard a little bit about Ward Hall, but it's never really hit me, and, and it's literally right here in our backyard in Georgetown. Mm-hmm. I mean, my wife dragged me to it. I was so reluctant, and I mean dragged almost to literally dragged over there, and I left – so just my, I, I mean, just wide eyed of just how much Kentucky and uh, United States history was right here in a in Georgetown, Kentucky, of all places. Well, you never looked to think to look in your backyard. So no. Well, so Tommy, I want to ask you too here um, as we're starting to dance around uh, the formation of the Georgetown gentlemen here. So you, 
invited teams out to play here, and you built the field at Wart Hall. Um, is there a baseball field when out there? When you say built a field, <laughs> we mowed the hay field. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't schedule games usually until after hay season. Uh, and, and then we throw down three bases and put some flour as the baseline. That's the that consists that's the entirety of building the field. But there's no like <laughs> nets and guardrails like what they're No, doing. no, no. But this is honestly it's authentic. That's how they would have played in the eighteen sixties. Every town had their town team. They would have little rivalries, but they would go over and they would play in a hayfield or in a in a park or whatever. If there was a tree in the outfield, that's just part of the game. That you know, home field advantage. Extra it's player, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So you, you you play the field that you're on. Uh, we do try to make sure there aren't any major holes. If there, are, if we did find one one time. We put a little flag in it, you know, so nobody would twist an ankle. But other than that, there's no real construction process. So let, let's dig into that a little bit since you brought it up um, here for those who might be baseball novices like myself, I grew up in outside of Cincinnati watching the Reds and last time they won anything was when I was born. So I'm the disappointment for the Cincinnati Reds, <laughs> but um, tell me the, so what's the difference between 1860s baseball rules and modern day baseball rules? So for the most part, the, the game is very recognizable. I mean, if you are a baseball fan or if you're just, I mean, if you've just ever watched a baseball game and you come out to a vintage game, you're going to understand what's going on. Hmm. But there, are subtle differences uh the one i mentioned right away that everybody knows is first there's no gloves uh gloves did not really come into play until about the 1880s uh so the the ball that max was talking about is it, it's referred to as a lemon peel ball uh it because it looks like you know the the rind of a lemon on it uh but it's a lot softer it's hand wound uh the size is pretty much the same uh but it's just it's a softer ball, but you're catching it barehanded. So yeah. one, you want it to be a little softer, but it still stings pretty good. Mm. Uh, pitching is done underhanded, uh, and, and like the, softball, right? Yeah, okay. But you know, in competitive softball, you're they're hurling it in pretty good and pretty oh, fast. That, that's, that's not like a nick on women or softball. That's, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying this is different in the fact that the pitcher's intent was not really to strike the batter out. It was more to give them a ball to put into play. Uh, and in fact, the batter can even request where they would like the ball thrown. Would they like it a little high? Would they like it a little low? It's a it's a very gentlemanly sport at the time. There were rivalries, but everybody was cordial to each other. Uh, other you know little differences like if a foul ball's hit and you catch it off off one bounce, that's an out. Uh, and then, I mean that's not you know that's not true with the modern game at all or anything. Now. Some play that. The, the 1860s, there were different years, different rules, different regions, different rules. So that's kind of what we're going to be playing by. That's, that's a pretty standard. But there are other teams that will play that don't. So it's basically, you, you know, it's house rules wherever you go. Um, if we go to a team that doesn't play that way, we'll play by their rules. If they come to us and we do, they'll play by ours. Yeah. Are you going to be okay playing by the rules, Max? I've, I've seen I'm, you take a, liberties before. On the I'm a huge rule follower. And I've never been caught not following the rules. Never been caught. So. I said what I said. <laughs> I'm a huge rule follower, and I've never been caught not following the rules. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so it doesn't sound like from, like, here, you kind of said it's a gentleman's agreement, no pun intended. Um, so there's not a whole lot of no hitters that are going to be in these uh, no, games. No, yeah. no. And some of the scores do get up there. I, at first, I thought that was just – speaking to the athletic talent of the teams. It turns out I think it's more about the rules. But it, it's if a team scores less than 20 runs, it's really kind of a surprise. Mm. Uh, the, uh, typical scores are 30 to 21, something like that. So it, it, it's not the pitcher's duel that you might see in the major leagues today. Yeah. And you guys are – I've also said, are you guys doing like the uniforms too, like old school uniforms and stuff? That we are, um, fortunately, uh, I thought for the longest time, because to be authentic, they would be wool. And by the grace of God, Tommy found someone that's able to make it uh, a cotton uh, a cotton uniform. But Still I mean, authentic. Still authentic. It's still an authentic build, but it's something a little bit cooler in, uh, in the heat. But when you talk about we've got the, the shield that is on the front of the uniform, meaning the... It, the, I guess it's more of a fabric shield that goes on top, which was very traditional back in the day. 
the traditional hats. Um, I the mean, knickers. The knickers Let's as well. The knickers. Knickers, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. and the the sizing on them. You know, usually for teams today, you know, you're going to get yourself a, a pair of XL pants with a two XL shirt. Hey, I've it's been like, losing weight, man. So, <laughs> 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 but um, I'm talking more for for me now. But um, uh, but I mean the the uniform measurements are extremely precise. Um, these are one pretty expensive uniforms, but then two. I mean the the level of authentic, uh, authenticity that they do with these uniforms is truly astounding because when you see them i mean it's it looks exactly it takes it truly takes you back to the 1860s uh, you're right with that, about the sizing i felt like i was you know getting ready to get married and get you know my my sizes all for the tuxedo mm-hmm. and everything but it's a, it's a baseball uniform so, so where do you guys get uniforms like those made so there there are two or three vendors really in the nation uh we're using one that everybody uh, they told me were probably the best ones it's a uh, a business called kmp weavers out of connecticut um they they provide a lot of uniforms for yale university for different things um they i've seen their work it looks good hey and it feels good too well Look we don't know we've good. not tried it no, no, we haven't yeah, tried it yeah, on yeah, yet yeah. <laughs> but hopefully it feels good so <laughs> So, last things is we kind of talk about uh, classic versus modern baseball here. What about um, helmets and bats? Are you guys still using like Louisville Sluggers, or what kind of what, what's the bat situation? And is there helmets, or is helmets a no? Was not a no, no helmets, no helmets, no okay. helmets at all. Um, Louisville Slugger, I looked into that to see if they had uh, a vintage division or something because I thought it'd be you know a nice tie-in being here in Kentucky. Yeah, they don't anymore. Uh, so we're actually looking at, there's this, uh, a business in Arizona called Smacker Bats that make really good bats. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they're a bat company like Louisville Slugger. They do college bats, high school, everything, but they have a vintage division. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's, we're ordering about five bats from them. Uh, what, we'll, we'll use those. What does a vintage bat look like? It's more, it's closer to a, like almost like the wiffle ball stick ball. Okay. Yeah. It's very close to that. But it's a lot denser. It's a it's a much denser wood. You've got to kind of put a little oomph behind your uh, your swing. I was surprised how heavy it was yes. when I tried to swing it the first time. Hey, I was gonna say I remember my t-ball days, just winding up there. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's kind of cool to hear that you guys are. The idea is you guys are trying to one kind of tag team with the history of your building, but also with the history of the sport as well. Um, kind of. To educate people a little bit. Right. And when, and, and that's the whole goal is just to kind of to, – to be a living history display uh, for people that want to learn but don't really want to pick up a book and read. Mm-hmm. We're that alternative way to go show and demonstrate how, how baseball was played. Uh, and hopefully we'll spark some interest in some people. You know, we said from the very get- beginning, we're not setting out to lose – but if we lose, eh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're we're not moving on to the major leagues. You know, there are no scouts there. But if we can put a, a smile on some kids' faces, it's worth it. All right. Well, cool. Well, hey, we're we're excited to see as you guys are going to get started here. We'll talk about um, what the season looks like for you guys coming up here. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the name too. So I know you both are from Georgetown. So obviously, it had to have Georgetown in it somewhere here. Uh, but the name, the Georgetown gentleman, how did that come to be? Alliteration. And that's basically the result of it. <laughs> we, we have so some of us, and I, I got the uh, the sports writer from the Georgetown News Graphic to, involved in this. We have researched history. We can find really no record of a baseball team in Georgetown. There probably was one, mm. uh, but it's possible that you know we've also we've also got Georgetown College, so it's possible the town just enjoyed the college games or yeah. something. So. There, a lot of the vintage teams they do name their teams after whatever the the team was in the 1860s in their town but we didn't have that we needed something catchy georgetown gentleman just kind of rolls off the tongue and you just started it started it from there so you're starting the history today right and one and tommy's being a little bit too modest on this because maybe the name itself isn't historic but every single aspect that we've made decisions on with this team the first and foremost of every single um every single decision has been okay is this historically accurate? Does it promote the state? Does it promote Georgetown? And is it going to further already that stoic history that 
our our town has and every, and this this team has been handled by Tommy with such care as well and then the other team other teammates as well but Tommy has gone I mean I'm considered part of part of the board truly in title only because that's all I can I'm capable of really doing because I would mess this up but Tommy has put in so much legwork into this and from everything of looking at the nonprofit status to looking at what this um, what it means for the town for the county the um, historical accuracy of it and then also because he's got he's got a borderline ulterior motive in this as well it, what does it do for ward hall as well because mm-hmm. it is such an incremental part and tommy's been a huge part of keeping this place afloat because 15 years ago that place was about ready to just fall to the ground yeah and just the renovations that have been done in 15 years and how it's been able to be saved a, a huge incremental part of the state of Kentucky saved because of his hard work. There is an ulterior motive in it, but it's all to promote that history and just the love of the state and then the love for the history of the game as well. The other ulterior motive, I figured if I start the team, they can't kick me off of it. <laughs> you can't get fired. That's right. <laughs> I think when me and Max started BB and Chalk Talk, that's what his thing too. He's like, I'm, we're starting this podcast, but – you all work for me now. You can't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way there was going to be a coup. Yeah. But then I realized that Matt and Lyle were bigger than me, and they could literally throw me out of my house if they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Tommy, you also talked about uh, kind of at the start here that you guys joined the Vintage Baseball Association. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that organization and what does that mean for the Georgetown gentlemen? Like, are you? Does that mean like? Is that your conference? Is that your? Uh, or, uh, I guess, for lack of better words, uh, yeah, I guess conference you're playing in. It, it's less of a, of a like what we would think of as a sports conference, and it's mm-hmm. more of a support organization. I think um, they do a lot of work with telling people, you know, what goes well for some teams, what other teams have tried that didn't work so well. Uh, they they put the rules online, send us copies, you know, th- things like that of the support. Um, I'm I'm really learning. I'm not an expert on the association since we just joined, but I'm, I'm learning as we go. Uh, one of the, the cool things they did, they've worked out deals with some vendors. You can get 15% off if you're a, a member organization. That's already saved us quite a bit of money just on the mm-hmm. bats and the uniforms. But also, they help steer us towards the people that actually do really good work. Uh, so that was that was definitely a positive. But it also, there you know, there's a club listing uh, a lot of the teams that have reached out to us about playing games, they've seen us, seen our name on the the club listing. I saw that we, you know, we were close in the area or something. But so it, it, it seems to be a very good organization. It, but it, it's not a conference. It's it's just really for support, which That's, is what we need. Yeah, hey, <laughs> it says support, and then you know, you talk about how the Vintage Baseball Association supporting you, but there's another. Uh, organization that's also supporting you guys i wanted to talk a little bit about um the lexington legends has signed on as one of you guys' sponsors here which is for those who don't know in this area i was about to call them our minor league team in lexington but i guess they're not minor league anymore but they are a baseball organization that's here in the area and they're one of you guys' sponsors so how did that relationship get started well and we've been fortunate enough to to really get a lot of good sponsors we're going to start kind of debuting a lot of those in the next few weeks coming up but the legends were the first one to sign on and they to to this day they're they're our largest financial sponsor uh they we, we told them they are our title sponsor. We want a relationship with them. Glad they want a relationship with us because the Lexington Legends have done a lot to promote baseball in Central Kentucky for 20 years at yeah. least. And it, I mean, we all know about going to the Legends games and seeing things there, but what a lot of people don't know is what else they do. Um, my son plays Little League and Scott County Youth Baseball. They are a huge financial sponsor of the, the Little League programs in the area. It, they're bigger I mean, you know, their motive is to get people to games, but they're bigger than just their ballpark. They want to be really involved in the community. Uh, and it was just a, a just a chance meeting I had a few years back with uh, Andy Shea, who's the owner of the, the Lexington Legends. Uh, so when I started doing this, I reached out and got great reception. They they wanted to be on board from day one. So it, it's 
it's working into a good relationship. Uh, next year, we after after we have our uniforms and hopefully we've had a little practice time, uh, we're we're going to play a game at the Legends Ballpark oh, against wow. another vintage team. Um, and and oh, one thing I'll tell you about where you said that they're they're not really minor league anymore, and that's true. the The minor league system's gone through a complete restructure this year. Yeah. But I don't know if you've seen any games this year. The Legends, while they're an independent team, they're really better than minor league teams now. Uh, they're 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 affiliated with Major League Baseball, but not in the farm system of being affiliated with a parent club. But what they've got that ninety percent of their roster this year has major league experience. Yeah, when I Brandon Phillips is there. Brandon Phillips is playing. He also he also owns part of the team right yeah. now. Uh, I, I guess if you own the team, you can put yourself in at second base. Uh, <laughs> but but almost every guy that takes the field has played in the major leagues, and you won't find that on the highest of minor league teams. So it, it you know the the old structure of A double A triple A baseball this doesn't exist. But if it did, they would essentially be four A. Uh, just one, half a step short of the major league. So, it, yeah, I've been to several games this year. It's really good baseball that they're playing. I'm happy to hear that. You, you know, I've I've really enjoyed. I've only gone to a handful of Legends games since I moved here, but it's fun. It's a it's a nice stadium. It is. Um, when you get inside of it, it's very it's fun time. I'm I usually go for you know dollar beer nights, but yes. <laughs> it's a good time out there. Quarter so. hot dog nights, good too. Quarter hot dog yeah. nights, <laughs> and but. That's cool to hear that they've been able to support you. So, is there going to be a a, a talent share? Um, will you guys get Brandon Phillips in exchange? You'll send them Max Godby. We, we may work out that deal. Yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> man, that's an awful deal for. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have a bunch of sponsors that are uh, coming up here, but uh, so let, let's talk here. So you guys are have had a practice on your belt at this point here uh, at the time of recording, getting ready. When does the season start for you guys? Basically, when the uniforms come in, <laughs> that's kind of what we're waiting on. We're we're kind of scared to schedule, you know, too close right now. Just in, we've been told our uniforms will be here the first of August. I, I'm a little nervous to schedule any games right then, so we'll probably not really start until September, uh, just to give a little lead, leeway time, make sure the uniforms get here. Got a couple of fairs, um, uh, fairs and tournaments that we are going to be a part of in mid September, and then. In October will be the the tournament in Ward Hall. Okay, and so that one will be kind of this season has always been and kind of Tommy's directive on it and a very smart one has been kind of a soft opening mm. of the Georgetown gentlemen. Let everyone get uh, kind of the taste of it, get used get used to it, and then the next year once we kind of know what we're doing at that point, we get a little bit of a half a season underneath our belt then we can really go in and really have just a lot of fun within really branch out even more. We really need to see what our talent level is before we know who to schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it's like a rec league. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right, let's got to play. Let's see who we got here who's showing up this week. So, are you guys going till November, December? Are you guys going um It sorry. usually ends in uh mid to late October, something, you know, when it starts getting a little too cool. Yeah, that's that's when we'll call it. Quits. When it gets a little too chilly, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. can't can't be playing baseball in thirty five degree weather. That's I mean, you right. could, yeah. Yeah. you just don't no, want to, right? <laughs> What's the coldest game you've ever played in, Max? Oh, yeah. Sorry for that segue, but probably, probably South Alabama, or no, not South Alabama, Alabama State. I think it got down to twenty five, maybe twenty five. 30 degrees somewhere around there it was below freezing oh, and yeah. the and the rule always with offensive linemen is you do not wear sleeves unless it's under 32 degrees and i'm a wimp when it comes to cold weather i'd put me in a sauna for 160 degrees i'm good to go for days you put me in 45 degree weather i'm like that little weak little dog in the in the memes <laughs> where he's like ain't you cool out time for me and so i was really thrilled when it was like below freezing i was like finally we're gonna get to wear uh Some sleeves, sleeves. <laughs> and then i we get to the game and no one's wearing sleeves and i'm like what the heck guys like we had a deal we signed <laughs> off on this and so you i was like okay email. be a well, leader max be yeah. a leader well see i did what a lot of leaders do i did not wear sleeves 
but I sure as heck cut the sleeves out of that, that thermal, uh, those thermal uh, shirts, yeah. and I wore a thermal vest underneath, <laughs> and my chest was nice and toasty under, yeah. underneath. I was about to call it your Under Armour, but that's a different sponsor. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No Under Armour. Um, so it looks like you guys are going to be playing this fall as you guys get started and as I try to pull a beer out of my fridge. you want one? Yeah, I'll take it. All right. Thank you. Uh, beer break. Hang on. <laughs> This is why I love this podcast. <laughs> so you guys are going to be playing this fall here and we're waiting for the jerseys to get in to get those things going here. So, and you mentioned you've already started uh, joining some tournaments, setting up some scrimmages against some teams. So who are, who are you guys going to be playing? Are you guys playing a lot of Cincinnati teams? Are you playing other teams in this area, other states? Well, and so September uh, 18th, we're going to be playing in the heart of vintage baseball tournament uh, in Joyce Park, which is in Cincinnati, uh, and, and what I understand, that is a, like a full day, full on festival. Uh, there will probably be eight to ten teams there for that. Um, wow! And, and it's a it's a tournament. Uh, you, they start out about seven o'clock in the morning, and if you win, you move on. Now, luckily for us, if you lose, there is a losers bracket. Like I said, we don't set out to lose, but eh, we're not going to take it too seriously either <laughs> so we're going to play that uh i don't know who yeah i think it's actually just a draw on that so i don't know who we'll be playing yet then uh september uh 25th we're going to travel to augusta kentucky uh up in bracken county on the ohio river it's the uh, battle of augusta days which is the i guess there was a civil war battle in augusta uh, a few years ago they added a vintage baseball game as part of that uh i do know the the four teams that'll be there uh, are the Black Bottom Nine, who have always played at Ward Hall, uh, the Moscow Monarchs, which is another Cincinnati team. I was disappointed when I found out it wasn't a group of Russians. I was really, <laughs> I was getting patriotic, really wanted to play them. Uh, us, and then a team from Detroit. And I think we're going to be paired up with a team from Detroit. Okay. So, and then on the, probably the, right now, we're looking at October 16th and 17th, having uh, essentially a little tournament in Georgetown. And uh, we'll we'll invite three other teams for that. Uh, we're we're working on those. We haven't got commitments yet, uh, but we'll have those in town, uh, and hopefully have a nice little day of it or two days of it actually. Awesome. Well, hey, it sounds like you guys have got some ideas at least where things are going to be going here as you get the season started. Um, so let let me ask you this: as we're uh, talking about practice, as we're talking about the schedule here. Let, um, I, I know you're. You've already got your ace hitter signed here, Max. That's right. To, for a dollar. For a dollar. <laughs> for a dollar. That's best deal ever. <laughs> um, He's worth at least two. So, <laughs> so what? What? What does your roster look like? Is it ex athletes? Is it community members? Or? We are all over the board, okay. and, and, and really, that's the way it would have been in the 1860s. It would have been just 15 guys from town. Uh, so I. I may be at the upper limit uh, of our team at age 43. Uh, we go down to at least one I know who's 24, and most people are just somewhere in between there. Uh, we've got two guys who played college baseball, thank the Lord. Uh, <laughs> we, we've, we've got a college football player here in Max. We've got a, a college basketball player, a guy named Brian Ellis, is on the team. But then we've got just guys that, you know, they've been interested in, in baseball, you know, some of them have played at some level. Some just like to watch, uh, but we're going to get out and have fun with it. Well, Max, you've got, I, I, you've got some background in baseball. Did you play baseball? I do. It? Okay, I played through middle school. Baseball was actually my better sport. Okay, and then I realized I am terrified of that little white ball because it came back to me on a pitch, and it daggum near broke my nose and knocked all my uh, front teeth out and after that i went to my dad which my dad was the biggest i mean baseball freak i mean my dad was he played I'm, some college ball didn't he well back in the day back back in the day he's 65 um so back in the day there were no baseball scholarships yeah. and so my dad was having to pay for his own college at that time. He was driving a dump, tr uh, a dump truck to pay for school. Yeah. And so it was either play college ball and be in a ton of debt or be smart and take a job and work, uh, work through school also. But I mean, even after college, he played on whirlpools, um, 
uh, corporate softball team and uh, destroyed every team in Danville, Kentucky during okay. that. And then when he got transferred to Nashville, Tennessee, did the exact same thing. So, I mean, he's always had a knack for it. And so it was always kind of the sport that I leaned to. But then after I got hit by the ball, I was like, you know what? I'd rather hit a 315-pound guy that I know is going to hit me and instead of a ball that's coming really, really quick, and I don't know when that's going to happen. So call me a wuss. That's why I love the outfield because I'm far away from it. It's slowed down enough to where it's like, okay, I can run this down now. So for the record for anyone listening here, Max Gobby is more afraid of a small baseball than he has of Alabama's D-line. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> and I still am pretty terrified of Alabama's defense line. I still have nightmares. So does uh, Jeff come and coach you all at all? Has he uh, got any uh, pointers to give you? Well, before he broke his arm this year, he was one, and I think I told you, he was interested in playing. He was like, you know, and for a 65-year-old man, I mean, he is in still really good shape. I mean... On one hand, it would have made me feel good being 43. On the other hand, he would have outperformed me, and I would have felt really bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, it, it, you talk about – you thought – you would have thought when I told him about this, I told him, Dad, I am denouncing everything about football, and baseball is now my sport. You would have thought that – I mean, he's he is extremely pumped – when I gave him the schedule, he's like, oh, my goodness, we, we can get a hotel this night, and then we can actually go to a Reds game also. And I mean, he's got, I mean, he's got this thing planned out. He's got out. the itinerary planned out. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, this sounds awesome. That sounds like you guys are kind of getting things going here. So um, as we kind of are winding down here a little bit, um, Tommy and Max, I want to kind of ask you, especially, Tommy, since you're kind of the the – brains behind the operation that is so scary <laughs> <laughs> I, I i am the captain we'll, yeah. we'll put it that way yeah, you're the brandon phillips of this team so <laughs> have you picked your nickname yet uh, i'm pretty Are, sh- I'm pretty sure i'm gonna be molasses i still think you should be captain oh wait yeah, yeah. you guys have nicknames oh you by... you, we, we do not you do not go by your real name i mean it's known but yeah. everybody has a nickname and, and there's some creativity there so you're your molasses molasses Max, for my what's, blazing speed what's your uh what's your uh name mine is see i think i'm the only one that's actually got a story behind mine i am the bull moose and it's because during the civil war when i fought for the north and fought for the union i ran around and you know stabbed people with bayonets like a wild bull moose you, so you have background? You have background? I had a background story. See, I went I didn't home, know that. I went, <laughs> I went, I'd sent in the text. I said, so like, I'll read everything you write. Well, yeah, not a lot of people do. So, but that was, that was the part that um, was a, a big deal. What I thought was a big deal was, you know, there had to be a meaning behind your nickname. And there's some guys was like, I'm going to be cornbread. I'm like, why? Why? There's got to be a story behind that. And I get kind of Tommy's now with molasses, but it was just like, I was like, well, okay, after the well, first I, practice, when he saw I, me I, run, I, I, now he understands. <laughs> but I was like, you know, but you've got um, uh, Spencer Smith, who squints, because that's what we always called him throughout school in elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, I'm trying to think of some. We, of the we've other. got Sarge, but that, that's because Sarge. he was in the military himself right. and was a sergeant, so that's it's kind of that's stuck fitting. with him. Yeah, S- was Skippy one or no. a Scooter? So there is a Scooter. Scooter, yes, Scooter. So yeah, yes. so th- there are nicknames, but apparently you just through a name you just picked a name out of webster and it's like okay i guess i'm gonna be that I, I, these may change by season two when we can start giving each other nicknames you know, it's, <laughs> so well i was going to title this episode uh georgetown gentlemen conversations with uh tommy and max but i think it's going to be molasses and bull moose now uh, there so. we go there you go <laughs> I can, you made a whole background story is work is work going slow right now or what's uh i'm able to I mean, no, we're we're still busy, but I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, just, I, I, when, when have you ever known me to do anything 50%? It's going to be 100% our every Our last so. podcast. He's up at... Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's up at 3 a.m. feeding a baby. I, I, I can tell you by experience, you, you have some random thoughts that come in your mind at that point. <laughs> yes. uh, so, all right. Well, so as we're kind of talking here and we've gone over the Georgetown gentleman and the vintage baseball aspect of it here. I know you kind of have mentioned that this is kind of going to be a, a, a test season, kind of working out the kinks and stuff. So where after this season, what, what's the hope? Are you just going to be a, a annual thing or what's the 
uh, what's what are you trying to what what's the hope if you if the the perfect season happens where are you hoping to take the Georgetown gentlemen from here? P- perfect season, I think we would uh, you know probably start playing in April and go mm-hmm. from April to October. But while Max got his dollar, uh, everybody else didn't, um, <laughs> and, and so <laughs> we're we're normal guys. We got jobs. We got families. We we have a lot of conflicts at times. So we're not going to play like a. MLB type schedule by any means. Yeah. It'll be you know one or two games a month. Uh, that that would kind of be the goal. I think is you know, end up maybe about ten games a year. Uh, probably you know hopefully half at home, half away. All right, gonna be like the U.S. soccer team. So <laughs> come together just for one victory. <laughs> Fair or a loss. <laughs> you lost us. You talk, started talking about yeah. soccer, so- <laughs> sports. Did you see England and Italy the other night? I only watch when USA is watching. That way, I can make fun of the Europe's, the Europe's, and the other countries that take this stupid sport super seriously and say, "Hi, we're better at you." And then they go, "You know, well, you don't even like it." And I said, "I know. That's why I'm, I'm talking trash right now because we beat you in something that you care about." Thoughts of Max are not <laughs> condoned by most <laughs> of friends of the Corner Pod. They're not necessarily condoned by friends of the Corner Podcast. Nor by the Georgetown gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> Georgetown gentleman. That's what I say. You need, you need precursors yeah. to the show. You need like little why, uh, why warning you, notes. Why do you think I put on my Twitter account, all opinions are my own? <laughs> you know, mine says that, but it also says, should be adopted by you immediately, though. <laughs> <laughs> All Humility right. runs in our family. Yeah. I've <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, guys. As we're uh, wrapping up here, can you tell my listeners where they can find both of you at individually? Where can they learn more about Georgetown, gentlemen? Where can they learn about Wart Hall? And where can they watch you guys this season? Sure. Well, uh, individually, Max, you're usually a country boy, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> that, Fava's, um, Blue Stein with me. Yeah, <laughs> Blue Stein. <laughs> no, uh, if, if you go on Facebook uh, and, and search Georgetown Gentleman, that's going to be the easiest way. Uh, long-term goal, we hope to have a website. Those cost money. So right now we're on the free Facebook promoting the heck out of it on that. Uh, and podcast and podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. yes <laughs> uh but that's gonna be where you're gonna get up-to-date information about our schedule and things like that ward hall while i'm while i'm here and plugging them it is wardhall.org that's w-a-r-d-h-a-l-l.org uh that will give you information both about the house but then also tell when open houses are for ward hall and then it'll also tell when we get the finalization on the the dates for the the vintage baseball there it'll be on their website as well um what else did you ask about where can they find you at on on line do you have an online presence like max i i do uh uh it it, it's not quite as uk centric but you know it's uh i'm i'm on twitter it's at tommy druin that's d-r-u-e-n uh i i also i write a monthly column that's in seven newspapers across the state but uh you can find that through facebook you can just search tommy druin Find him on Facebook also. He asks the most random questions, and I love reading the comments on them. I mean, it, I have a very diverse yeah. set of friends. But, yeah, it, everybody had their pandemic project. Evidently, I had like three or four because I just kept getting bored. <laughs> At the time, we were building a house, and it wasn't getting done, so there wasn't anything to do around the house. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a lot of random stuff during this. Yeah, you did uh... Did some Facebook posts and made a baseball team. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And Max, uh, just to remind my listeners, where can they find you at? I mean, the same spiel again. I mean, at oh my god, be 64. Um, and then um, the post game show um, on uh, 97.3 WVLK with um, my man Larry Glover. And we will talk all uh, post game UK football immediately after the game. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to think what else I'm on. I'm actually on round of shots. Um, a little bit of an uh, announcement. Yeah. I will be on permanently. And I say permanently. I'm on a year long contract with them. Um, so I'll be on weekly with them starting August 1st. Awesome. So it's going to be a very, uh, very busy fall. 
<laughs> All right, adding baseball, adding uh, football, radio, and you got to come to my wedding still. <laughs> that is yes. <laughs> so Max is filling his schedule up pretty well for uh, this yeah, uh, October. There, there are several October weddings this uh, this year. Yeah, I mean, like and Trevino. Yeah, Trevino's as well. Trevino's is taking like a full week as, <laughs> as well. But um, no, it's it's going to be fun. I can't wait to celebrate you and. Trevino, it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a very good fall. Awesome. You all are still at the age you're in wedding season. I'm in that sweet spot between weddings and funerals. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you for talking about the Georgetown gentleman, Tommy. I'm sorry you have to be uh, related to this guy, <laughs> but um, appreciate you guys coming on, and we're excited to watch some baseball this fall with you guys. So. Sounds great. Come on out. Yeah, come on out, everybody. We'll play ball. Thanks, Dan. Thanks.